What the f*** is going on? I like to party. Jesus, honey, wax much? This is Unwaxed. Get in, Lizzie. We're going shopping. With Sophia and Sistine Stallone. Did we just become best friends? Yep. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Giggles, we can't talk about. That was a rated R conversation, so we're probably not going to divulge. But hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the Unwax podcast with your favorite sister, Sophia. And Sistine. Yay. Yay. Okay, so like we said on last week's episode, we are going to be doing a Q&A for these next two episodes, but we really want to have a male's input. So we asked you guys a lot of questions. You came up with a lot. Okay, we're yeah. so excited to jump into all of these. And we're excited that Chris is going to share some of his wisdom, some of his experience, some of his <laughs> intelligence, his suave nature. Oh my God. He's wearing like sick orange camo pants right now. Like he pants. is the guy <laughs> that we want answering these questions. A hundred percent. And what we also want to make aware is that we split it up questions from the girls and the second part is questions from the guys, because we also have a lot of male listeners that are curious about what girls are thinking. And these questions that we chose are, they're good ones. They're good. These are good questions this week. They're so good. So we're going to start for part one is questions from the girls. Part one, baby. Let's do it. Okay. All right. The first question is, oh, damn, we're starting off strong. I know. I saw this <laughs> and I had to write it down. Wow. I want to track my boyfriend. Oh but I don't know how to ask. Chris already reacted. Do guys not like it? Oh, Jesus is the right response. I think it's all about the approach <laughs> with this. I, I don't like the whole phone tracking thing, mm -hmm. except for, like, safety reasons. But yeah. it, the, the way that this question is worded already, it's like she has a reason that she needs to track him, right. and she knows that it's, like, not necessarily the healthiest mm. thing that's yes. going on right here. Yes. Yeah. I, I think a lot of guys and girls feel almost offended when asked, I need to track you because they think their partner is entrusting them. Mm -hmm. I've never personally asked to track and I don't want anyone tracking me because I, I feel like you become then too codependent yeah. on the other person. I, I have a 50-50 about it because part of me doesn't mind because I think for safety reasons, yeah. okay, yeah, if your boyfriend wants to watch what your girlfriend's doing, like make sure she's okay. And yeah. that's usually how it starts. So I feel like... The way to approach it yes. needs to come from a safety standpoint. You can't come in being like, I don't trust you. I need to see where you are. That's exactly right. And then that's right. when the guys get kind of like, oh, right. If I don't you're feel using like doing it this. for safety, yes. If you're using it to catch them doing something bad, like going out to a bar, no. But my suggestion is if it's that, go in with the safety. Just pretend. No. Oh my God, we're so <laughs> devilish. That's good. It's a good idea. Okay. How Wait, do, before, before. Uh, Has a girl ever asked you? I'm sure, yeah, but I don't I do not You don't do it? Do it? No. Mm. Well, how do you say no? Um, <laughs> Probably on the spot, just like you're asking oh. me right now, if which guy, is bad. See, that's what I'm saying. By the way, immediately if a guy said so no to me, I don't want you to track me, it, red flags in my head. But yeah. I don't blame you because it, I would say no too. It depends though because like is this my girlfriend? Is this somebody that I'm just seeing? If it's somebody that I'm just seeing even if we've girlfriend. been seeing each other for this a month a girlfriend. Two, like, if it was someone you're just seeing casually and they ask for tracking, I'd be like you're creepy insane. and we're yeah. not going to be together. But that if it's my, my boyfriend or girlfriend, okay, that makes sense. Okay. But just ask in a safety standpoint but then you, you know, just keep it on indefinitely. Okay. Not for an hour. All right. How do I get over my first date nerves? What's a good conversation starter? Hmm. Hmm. I don't think there's a correct way to get over first date nerves. You're always yeah. going to be a little nervous going mm -hmm. into it. I don't want to say have a cocktail because <laughs> that's probably makes me more nervous. And then I say something stupid. I would just go in with the mindset of this is just a person you're going out with. It doesn't have to lead anywhere. If it doesn't work out, no hard mm -hmm. feeling. Like don't stress out over the fact that you're trying so hard to make this other person like you. Yeah. Like, go into it with the mindset of, do I like them? And yes. that sort of takes away the pressure. I think, you know, it's funny. So I'm going on a date tonight, and it's someone oh! that, yeah, I <laughs> said last episode. So I actually am going on a date tonight, and I don't know what this guy looks like. I don't know anything about him. I only know his name, and we've been texting a little bit back and forth. And what's different, though, is that I'm actually not nervous for this date in comparison to other ones I've been on. And I feel like because I let my mind with the other dates go rampant about mm -hmm. like how is it going to turn out what does he look like what is it going to be 
because I put so much thought and pressure on the date, that's when I got nervous. But because I've been so, honestly, it's not planned. I've just been relaxed more for this guy, not because I he's done anything. It's just because I haven't put that pressure on myself. Mm-hmm. And I feel like once you kind of just remove that and you think, I'm just getting drinks with this person or I'm just having dinner with this person. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. It's just a boy. And a good conversation starter. Um, Ooh, conversation starter. I like just asking about it. Just keep it simple. Just, just ask what they do for work. Yeah. Like ask what things that they like to do for fun too. So you get a blend. You get like the whole picture sort of like how they spend their time sort of. And yeah. like if there's a match there, you can kind of figure yeah. it out. Is there a question that guys don't like to be asked about on the first date? I don't, not in particular. I what about exes? I, I always think people should never bring up exes on the first date. It it depends, it depends. I guess. Like, does it? Uh, if you're like fishing for like a particular answer, I feel like that's kind of weird. But yeah. if it's like casual, I don't. It's really dependent on the vibe. Like, are you? Does it seem like aggressive? Yeah, or, exactly. I mean, him, a girl yeah. asking a guy like, "Oh, when was your last relationship?" and him saying two years ago, that's not a big deal. I think it's it, like, how did it end? Was it bad? Was it, I think it was more probing for yes. deeper things, yeah. which should be like more of a third date maybe question. I think also be aware of um, how much you're getting back from the other person mm-hmm. because if you feel like you're initiating every single conversation in the date so far, yeah, take a step back. You're not there to entertain this person. You don't always have to fill the awkward silence. That's their job yeah, as well. But I also will say I've talked to a lot of guy friends that have been on dates with girls that don't say that much and they feel like they're pushing a lot. Girls, talk. If you're yeah. shy, please yep. talk because that's the whole point of a date is to get to know each other. I know you're probably nervous and you don't know what to say. Say something, anything. And if it's something you lean don't into know, the nerves. lean into things that you know you can talk about. Like, mm-hmm. let's say if you, I don't know, if he, if you like books, ask him what his favorite book is. And then you go, well, this is, then that makes you more comfortable. Yeah. And then you can kind of go into another conversation. But please do not sit there like a dead fish <laughs> and not have a conversation because then neither one of you are going to like each Agreed. other. That is the worst. Yeah. Period. <laughs> this person said, my life is boring lately. Any advice on how to spice things up? And you know what's interesting? It's, it's a different mm. question, not saying like how to spice things up in the bedroom, just in life. How do you just spice up life? Because <laughs> I've had those days where, you know. How to spice up. I think everybody has interests that maybe they don't have time to get to. So you can make a list of like things that you might be interested in. Just mm-hmm. sign up for some stuff. And then also if you feel like you're not hanging out with people enough, just start hitting people up. Like they will be happy to hear from you. It's not going to be weird or come off weird or anything like that. Snaps for Chris. I don't even hey. think I need to say anything else. That, that was great. That's I exactly can't. what you do. Perfect. Perfect. Nice okay. question. Next question. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Does working with your sister sometimes get on your nerves? Do you fight? <laughs> I work with mine and it's hard sometimes to get past it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot. We what? We Actually, fought like two days ago? Yeah. But Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. I feel like... I think you fight because you know that you can because you're family. Yeah. And we do get on each other's nerves because we both are comfortable enough to say if one's not pulling their weight or they need to do mm-hmm. more. And you couldn't really do that with a coworker or a friend. Mm-mm. But I also think it's such a good thing. Like, how fun is it that you get to do your job with your yeah. family? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, of course. I mean, there's no really getting around to that. But I think if you guys have open dialogue and clear yeah. communication, you can avoid a lot of the fighting. You know what's something um, Sistine and I did a couple of days ago that actually mm-hmm. really helped and it's kind of sustained everything? This is good. You came up with this. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of weird because I actually feel like the way I approached it was very much like a co-worker living buddy than like a sister. You so felt I, like my boss. Yeah, I, not really. So Sistine and I were having a super stupid argument over whatever. Like we weren't really speaking to each other, but we were speaking to each other in different languages. It was one of these yeah. things where she was saying something to me and I wasn't translating it and I was doing the same back. And so we took our break and I came back and I said, Sistine, we clearly don't like to fight with each other. So let's just pause, put our knives down, <laughs> Literally and, the weapon. and this is what I did and this helped significantly I said name one thing that I can do better to help our relationship in terms of maybe the way I speak to you what I do productively what I can do around the apartment and then tell me one thing that you like doing with me or like living with me or whatever or it is something like a compliment you do well. or something I do well it really helps and it helps and so I told her something that I wanted her to do for me and vice versa. And then I also said something that I admired about her. And so then we literally left it at that and, you know, haven't argued since. (laughs) 
Sisters. Sisters. How to not get stressed to be on a certain life timeline once you've hit your mid-20s. And then the other girl saying how to not compare to everybody else that's on that same timeline. I feel like that's just a part of your mid-20s. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like everyone sort of gives you advice or an older person will say, oh, just don't sweat the small stuff. And, you know, one thing I wished about my 20s that I could change is that I wouldn't be so hard on myself. But I feel like that's part of your mid-20s. Like, my mom said her mid-20s are the worst times of her life because she was so unsure and insecure and she didn't know who she was, what she wanted to mm -hmm. do, how she was going to make money. But I feel like that's just part of it. Like yeah. you're supposed to be unsure. Um, I watched something recently because I'm a, I'm the oh. same person that is so heady about timelines. And I've just watching all my friends grow up and have these boyfriends, have these, you know, stable jobs. And mm -hmm. they kind of it feels like feels like from the outside that everything is certain in their life. But yes. clearly everybody goes through something called uncertainty. And no matter where you are in your life, you're always going to be questioning it. But for me professionally and also romantically, I watched this video and this actually helped a lot where this girl was listing all of these immensely famous, successful people. Mm -hmm. And she was going like, Julia Child didn't write her first cookbook until she was 50. Vera Wang didn't create her first wedding gown until she was 40. Um, J.K. Rowling didn't write Harry Potter until she was like 32. Like all these people that mm -hmm. Oprah didn't make it until she was like 30 something. And you kind of just put into perspective, like it doesn't come that fast. Like yeah. things that you want in life aren't supposed to be like instantaneous mm -hmm. handed to you. It has to be when you're aligned, like when you're prepped, your life is your life when it's meant to be that way. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like these people just did what they needed to do and then it ended up working out. Yeah. I think the beautiful thing about being in your twenties though is it doesn't feel like the stakes are as high. So going for something and failing mm -hmm. is kind of fun because you don't feel like there's that big of a repercussion. Right. So like fail, have sex with him, regret <laughs> it, Christine, go out for that job, get fired, drink too much, be hungover. Like it's okay because you can get away with it now. Right. So and enjoy. I think in terms of love really quick, um, because I just watched another video where this girl love, was crying. Love, 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 love. Well, no, I mean, this girl was crying and she was literally, and it went viral because she was just saying, when is it my turn? She's 28. She's like, when is it my turn to fall in love? Like, I'm That's so sad. Tough. She was like, I'm embarrassed to be doing this. And this girl stitched it, who is like 33 and found her boyfriend of eight months and she's so in love. She goes, I was you eight months ago crying. She goes, the person will come, you guys. Like, it's going to happen. Be patient. And I have to, I'm telling this to myself, just be yeah. patient. Be patient, <laughs> Sophia. You seem very patient. <laughs> okay, next question. Um, been seeing this guy and things are getting serious. I've Ooh. already fallen for him. Oh. But how can I tell if he feels the same? Oh, 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 this is something we talked about last night. <gasps> okay, yes. okay, okay, okay. You guys, this is an experience that every single girl has encountered yep. before when they're dating a guy. And now you can tell me if this is true, Chris. <laughs> So the one way I know a guy is falling in love with me, just like if I've already fallen in love with him. Oh, yeah. I know where you're going with this. Is think of the scenario because you guys have probably been in it. Yep. You're laying in bed, yep. maybe post after whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's now that quiet moment where you're just laying on the pillow facing each other and he gives you that look. The look. They don't say anything. He just stares at you and it's like slightly smiling his eyes are wide it's just a, it's like, the look of love it's the look of love they like look at you you know that look and yeah. they don't say anything and they they're, they have like a little smile something and their switches. eyes are so soft something switches yeah. in a guy's brain where they look at you completely different and it, you can see it in their eyes it doesn't feel sexual looking it's no. it's like looking at you I don't even know how to explain it. Are we like, right on that? It's, look, it's like looking at you non-sexually. And you're yeah. like, wait, this is different. <laughs> no, non-sexually. No, but I agree. Yeah, no, I I, I think right? that this is accurate. Mm -hmm. I also would say, like, I don't mean this to be discouraging at all because mm -hmm. I think it just may happen sort of at different times for people. Like, early in a relationship, it might not be at the exact same moment, but you'll probably end up knowing. And if you don't know, maybe that person's just not communicative. Right. You have to talk mm -hmm. to them about it. Like, you got to tell them how you feel. It, it always ends up coming back to that in some sort yeah. of degree. Yeah, right. Though. But that look so of love. So if the guy, <laughs> man, it's my favorite but look. if the guy doesn't say anything, he's, I guess, maybe not very verbal with his feelings. Yeah, there's the chance that he's just bad at communicating. And so you could, you again, 
yeah. you can kind of bridge the gap by talking about how you feel about it and maybe you'll find out that it feels the same way and just Do you think though you can tell if the girl really, really likes you? Could you argue that most of the time the guy's pretty much on the same page? If you're at that level? I th- I think it sort of depends. I Damn, that's tough. It depends. Like there's yeah. probably people that are yeah. falling in love with you that you were like, mm. facts. facts. <laughs> there we go. I can name one. <laughs> okay, so <Sophia. laughs> like kidding, there's I'm multiple. Kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Okay. okay, tips for going through a breakup. He was toxic and I left, so I don't know why this hurts so much. I always say it's the toxic ones that take the longest for you to get over. Like, it's so easy getting over the nice guy. But it's so tough when the guy has put you through this emotional turmoil. Or girl, yeah. Or girl, because you try to rationale in your brain afterwards why this person did that and why they said it to me like that and why they would do these actions and then you start to spin yourself out and then you can start self-sabotaging and blaming yourself yeah no the toxic ones are are tough don't you think it's because you're so used to the chaos in your life and then when it goes away you're still chaotic it's not like you can just leave a toxic relationship and go okay i'm happy go lucky everything is happy it, there's repercussions to can like toxic long- people just stop being toxic <laughs> because i don't think they realize how much damage they're doing to non-toxic people and now us normals think that this is love us normals are, this we, is, are we us normals we're not toxic <laughs> we've seen toxic we are not toxic that's fair but it it completely messes with our brains and then how we approach future relationships mm. like now because i've been in a few toxic relationships when something is normal yeah i say what's wrong with him right and that's so messed up yeah nothing and she asked for tips through going through a breakup and i'm telling you this because we get so mad at our friends about this and sistine and i thank god keep each other accountable stop looking through his socials yeah. delete the photos delete the texts delete the things that remind you of him delete the tracking Don't ask where he's going or Mm -hmm. who he's seeing. Don't run into the places that you know he's going to be at. You have to move on on your own. It's like having a gnat. If you fly it around the whole time swatting, you're going to just keep playing around with your head. It's going to keep reigniting those old feelings. That's why every time people bring up, like, if a song reminds you of them, like, you think about them. Yeah. It's, it's, it's that we live in a society. We're in a society where reinforcement is constant and, it's mm-hmm. so hard to not do that or like to avoid it, but try. And I know you can just try. I know it yeah. hurts, but try. If he was toxic, it's a good thing. You're getting rid of baggage. Have you ever been in a very toxic relationship? Yes. Um, my advice on this is this. The toxicity thing, I think, is you're, it's kind of like a roller coaster of just you're waiting for those dopamine hits in it. And mm-hmm. that's why you keep coming back to it. Mm-hmm. So when that person leaves, it's just like huge dopamine crash plus heartbreak, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to figure out a way to stabilize afterwards, like mm-hmm. do healthier stuff, hang out with friends or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think exercise is like a big part of it, mm-hmm. not just for the physical like transformation or whatever, but literally for how you feel when you're. Yeah, a hundred percent. That's stuff. smart. That's a 100%. good way to get your outlet of like thoughts and yeah. anger and energy out. and i always say this to like i always say this to stan like you get to fall in love again with someone right like you get to feel that feeling of falling in love again with the right person that takes a while to get there yeah. you know just like think about that that there's someone else better and not toxic i always tell myself it's not me it's them okay just keep <laughs> telling yourself that you're perfect one thing, actually one thing on that though because i feel like people sometimes go way too far and overcorrect into like it's all this person's fault it's all that like you did play some sort of part so also think about that so you can take that to the next thing and improve on it 100 percent. what did you do to (laughs) to make things continue this cycle almost like why didn't you shut it down immediately right sometimes it might just be just to have more respect for yourself honestly yes it is but you know i i totally agree with um I, I think there's things that I did in the last relationship that I could have 100% done better. Mm-hmm. And the thing that has helped me with it is admitting it to myself. Even if I haven't talked to him yeah. or we haven't discussed the details of it, after a couple months going through and saying, oh, there was a side of this that I could have done better, that I could have fixed, that mm-hmm. I could have probably approached better and done you know, made the relationship a little bit easier. And that does kind of go, okay, like it kind of relieves that, Hundred percent. You know, pain. Okay. How do I know if my male best friend is just a friend? He's what not. Is, exactly. I was just gonna say. What is the quote He's we not. always say? Girls and guys can never be friends. Period. 
Sorry. Period. Yeah, he's not. He's not. No, he's not. He's not. I, I think every guy, no matter what you look like, whatever your extent of the relationship is, has imagined being with his friend who's a female. Right. Every guy 100%. has pictured it. Yeah. And then there's Unless he actually is not attracted to her, which I do, do, do think happens sometimes, yeah. but it's like few and far between. Yeah, I exactly. Think. And then I always say, if you guys do cross that line as friends, there's no putting the toothpaste back in the tube. Like you can try to be friends again, but it'll never be what it was. Isn't it true that- Come on, um, there's no way you can go like I, hang out I'd and agree it's with so it. casual. It'll never be what it was. I don't think it can, you, like you guys can't still have some sort of friendship, but then it's always like it, that happened. You right? can't erase that happening. So I'd agree, not not the same as it you, was. Once you've seen each other naked, you're like, yeah. yeah. Uh. But don't, isn't, it, isn't it true? Like, let's say um, if you got out of a relationship and usually like guys have good girlfriends that they confide in about mm -hmm. the stuff because girls are the kind of the only people that can really give you advice about the ex. Right. You've considered at one point <laughs> that girl that you're being vulnerable with as a girlfriend, right? Yeah. Like to date, right? As a girlfriend, like maybe not date. necessarily as a girlfriend, but yeah, in yeah, that light, for sure. <laughs> oh, so to be the knight in shining armor. Oh, God, that's kind of a good swoop in, ladies, are you if you're trying me? to get a guy post breakup. I feel like just guys be, are a little Just strategic. be vulnerable with him, yeah. like let him vent to you, but then also like look really cute every time he comes over. <laughs> that's so toxic. <laughs> I'm sorry, don't take that. Advice. I love this question. Why is Chris still single? <laughs> what does he look for in a girlfriend? Oh, boy. Um, so to answer the first part of the question, I've been in multiple, like, very long-term relationships. Really? So it was a conscious decision that I made to not get into another one for a period of time so I could oh. figure out myself and what I like. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Do you feel like when you are in a relationship, you're so focused on that that you're neglecting other parts of your life? It, I think that just kind of happens. Yeah. Like you kind of can form certain things to accommodate another person in some ways, but you know that can be healthy or unhealthy. So how long has this single period been for you so far? Since like mid-2022. Wow. So Christopher. If, but if a girl... Get well, back out there. Oh, I've been dating. I'm, dating. I'm just saying I'm not... Okay, so then this will answer <laughs> the second one. You've been dating, so what do you look for in a girlfriend? What are the qualities? <clears throat> well, I'm very busy, so I like... We Somebody like that. that is also independent, independent, mm -hmm. yeah, has their own thing going on, but also makes the time for people. Like, that's a hard thing. Like, usually you go one mm -hmm. way or the other, like, you just don't have much going on right. and you want to hang out all the time, or you're working all the time and you just kind of put the blinders on. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got to get to the sweet spot of you actually, first of all, your lives, you know, parallel each other in a way where you can actually find the time. Yeah. Right. Because sometimes it just isn't a fit like that, yep. depending on where you live, all that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, being able to make time for each other is important. So I think mm -hmm. that we say this to all of our girlfriends and all of our guy friends vent to us about their girlfriends. Do not be codependent in your relationship. Nothing puts someone off more unless you are the rare breed of man that just like loves feeling codependent with their girlfriend. I From my bad. experience, that's bad. That's bad. I, just, I don't think that's, I don't think that's good. Exactly. They, they want somebody that they can completely guide. It's like it crosses into manipulative right. it, territory. It crosses into controlling. Yeah. Be independent. There's nothing more sexy and attractive than a woman that has her own thing going on, has her own plans, has her own friends. Mm -hmm. And then if you guys are able to mesh your worlds together in a seamless way that doesn't change the way you guys were living your lives before that's when it works but i hate when girls are so well, dependent on their boyfriend it's just like let them breathe i know let yourself breathe i know i can't stand yeah like I you can grow together it. but don't stop growing on your own and if you know you're naturally like that that means you should probably be alone for a second yes and feel comfortable with yourself okay oh i kind of like this next question is there something women can wear on a first date that leaves a lasting impression Okay, now, this isn't for like dressing for the male gaze, right? Mm -hmm. But I think what this person is asking is like, is there a color or is there something that makes them just stand out as opposed to wearing just a tank top and jeans and boots? Like what is something that you black like, is like, wow, she looks good. A little what, black what, dress. What would you say? I wanna see you look like you basically is what I'd say. Like, okay, I like that. Okay, whatever your style is, like, have fun with it. 
and that will work. Best. Yeah. Yeah. I love when girls like go for it. Like if they're yeah. into like vintage and cool bomber jackets, like wear that. Yeah. yeah. Don't don't I used to do this where I would dress for what I think that they would want me to wear and mm -hmm. what they would like me the most in. And I was dressing for them. Yeah. Until I started dressing for myself. And I'm like, listen, if you don't like my dad's sweater right now, sorry. Yeah, I know we talked about in last episode that like, oh guys like sundresses, things like that. If you're not that girl don't be that girl because yeah. then you're just trying to push something and then you're not going to feel comfortable in your own skin. It also no. does, like the follow through is not there because you're not going to end up wearing uh, all yeah. that forever. So the uh, first date, you're trying to figure out the vibe of the person. So mm -hmm. I kind of want to see like, okay, 100%. how do you honestly kind of come to it? I, I think just that. put more effort into, you know, just put an effort into your appearance. Like smell good, have your hair nice. Smell like, good. Put a little makeup on. Smell good especially. Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My best friend is getting engaged to someone, oh boy, our entire friend group knows, knows yeah. isn't good for her. We've tried to drop subtle hints, but she is blindly in love. What do we do? Pray. Mm, yeah, Pray. nothing. I'm telling you right now, nothing, nothing, nothing. I, I've dealt with that. Especially nothing. when the ring is already there. The the invite is probably already sent. No, it's... What can you do? You, you can't say... When they're at, does anyone attest to this marriage? You can't, yes, like, no, it's too late. By the way, we have had that situation, and this person's been approached by multiple people, and nothing's changed. And if it hasn't changed now, it ain't changing then, and all you gotta do is be there and support her, and that's, that's that. Tough. I mean, because, by the way, I've seen this a lot with guy friend groups, because guys don't tell their guy friends if they don't like that girlfriend, right? Or they do. We do early on. Yeah, <laughs> we do early. But on. what is it about guys that stay with that girl then, even if she's just if they all hate her? Like, what is? Because I know my girlfriend's reasonings were more so. I think I can tell it's her family pressure of like all of them are married off, and mm -hmm. you know she just feels like she has to do it now, like her biological clock female. But why is guys staying with a girl that all of his friends are they're, not liking? They're comfortable and they don't think they could do better. Mm. Mm. That's like almost every time. Wow, mm, that's tough. Yeah, it's like an insecurity thing. It's like deeper. Yeah, I guess there's nothing you can do, but there's that sucks when the that whole. Sucks. Oh, it's painful. I, it. Yeah, yeah, I have friends. That, yeah, oh, yeah and you yeah. can't just can't stand their girlfriend. I don't know if I could. I can never stay in a relationship if everyone around me was like, "This is a bad guy." But no. that's what they're not. You're not even thinking. All you're thinking about is that person, that's crazy. and everything else is just a threat to that. That's you know. That's wild. Bro. I mean, I'm praying for you yeah. and your friend. Pray. <sighs> R.I.P. All right. Oops. Um, I've been on and off with this guy for years we've dated other people in between but always find our way back to each other mm. I would love for him to commit to only me but I feel like I'm stuck in this repetitive cycle with him where we start it and it doesn't go anywhere I really like him but it's emotionally draining do I cut it off completely or speak up oh I've been there well, I've been there but what's the difference though like do you want to try it or do you not want to try it is basically what it comes down to because yeah. you're going to – if you speak up, it's either going to work or it's not going to work and then you'll be at the I same position she, that you were if you right. cut it off. I guess maybe she's asking like why hasn't he – because she likes him. Because you're letting him. Yeah. That's the answer. Wow. That's <laughs> – oh, because you're letting him. Yeah. It's so, that simple. That's so rough. It is. That's true. You're it's letting him. It's so simple. Yeah. Dogs. No. <laughs> Men. <laughs> Sixteen. <laughs> Not the synonyms. Dogs. I mean men. <laughs> I mean puppies. Boys are puppies that you need to potty train early on. And if you don't, they're going to keep pissing on your rug. The rug being your heart. Okay. Also, also, <laughs> I blame her. Oh, shit. I'm not going to lie. Wait, I feel personally victimized because I'm you a, say that. Yes, I'm going to blame her. And speaking <laughs> as someone that has gone through it, you realized you let him on. Not you let him on, but you let him do this for you so long. So true. And I'm sorry, ladies, if this is a question you're asking right now and you feel like you're in this cycle, you should be looking at yourself going, why am I letting him do that to me? Yes. So I, not I'm, I'm not going to lie. Like you, you cannot get mad at him for doing something that you've allowed him to do for years. If someone, if a guy was letting me play with him for years and suddenly he comes at me when I've done nothing. Now it's just a fun game. I mean, the, it's, it's obviously, yeah. look, could he have said to you at some point, like, I'm just not ready for anything. And then it's been on and off. That's your fault mm -hmm. still. Cause he's already told you, but if no one said anything and it's been like this, 
girl. Yeah, I do take. If you want something more, find someone that yeah. wants more. Don't find someone that doesn't. I'm sorry. If and by the way, you can easily ask this guy, "What are we?" But you're and probably gonna get the answer you don't want. But he because he would have said something. But he already. also probably doesn't know that you want something. I'm sorry if you've been letting him go on and off for years, being casual with you. How is he supposed to read your mind and expect God, to Sophie, go on a date with you? You're going so hard on me right now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's true, though. But it's true. And I, I hate I, hearing the this truth. This is the one thing. Because I don't want to always coddle the girls for everything because I can't stand yeah. when we're like, but it's him, it's him. Sometimes it's you. Yeah. Sometimes you got to look at yourself in the mirror. I've done stupid stuff where I'm like, why did I let him do that? I think also women do love the chase as well. Yeah. And this guy is sounding like an unobtainable chase that you, for now, your own ego want to like capture and conquer. For what? What a waste of time. And I also think it's an introspective thing. Like, you don't think you deserve more? Like, after years, you never deserved someone that wanted to take you on a date? So then that's your own little toxic cycle that you have to work through in your brain, yeah. not with him. You really date as a reflection of how you look at yourself. You know, what was it? You, um, we accept the love we think we deserve. Yeah. Perks of being a wallflower. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ahead. next question. All right, we got two more. All right. Then we have all the guys after. Help! Oh no. I can't stop stalking my ex and his new girlfriend. Now, Sophia, let's get into it, shall yeah. we? That was let's so go. targeted. <laughs> oh, like the last one wasn't for me. I can't <laughs> stop stalking my ex and his new girlfriend. Um, help? Yeah, you need help. We gotta stop, babe. I always say this to Sophia because she's a, <laughs> she's a stalker. Because she's a stalker. She's a stalker. Okay. This is so embarrassing. And I say, whenever I hope you go, never listen to this ever. Sorry, we're not clipping this. What, ever. But, sorry, what person hasn't like peeped their ex's Instagram? Oh every come once on, everyone, everyone does. It. Everyone. So you're not alone, babe. We here. We we're speaking with you. We stand with you. But I always say to Sophia. Okay, Actually, I blocked mine on everything. That's the amazing. Most by the way, I blocked on everything, wait, and guess, that probably drives her by crazy. By the way, this is my problem. It's like I, I want to, but I don't want them to think they've had an effect on me because I think you do. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like when yeah. I block, that means like, oh, I really just. You, do you know what I'm saying? Because like I would block both him and his current girlfriend. I think you're making yeah. excuses. No, I. I can't give you good advice on this because mine ended very poorly. So there's mm. not as much of the, like, I I was just like, I gotta be done with this. Like, it, right. was, it was a more for yeah. me thing. I was like, I can't, I don't want to see yeah. any of this. Like, That's good. Yeah. You gotta close all the doors. But I always say to Sophia, whenever you go on <laughs> your ex's page or your ex's new girlfriend or whatever it is, or their friends, seeing where they're traveling to, you're never going to, after you see it, put your phone down and feel better. You're always going to find something that makes you feel worse about I, yourself. So why do yeah. you want to torture yourself? I'll say this. Every time I check, I always leave feeling horrible. You're Every never going to leave being like, I feel great it's now. My they worst. look so good and I'm very yeah, happy. No, it's my worst habit. And you know what? Now going back to me thinking about blocking, if it stops you, Sophia, then do it. This like, is what if, I've done. If it helps. If you don't want to block. I've literally muted. No, but it that every doesn't single matter. person. I've even stalk. kissed. You can still stalk without following someone. But I have someone. no desire to because what whatever they're doing in their life. Yeah, but is, some that's but this is the thing where we always say we differ. Some people just have a really hard time, and I understand. I was going hard about like deleting the photos, deleting this. This is like some people's kryptonite. It's like they like to keep like I'm a curious person at nature, and I always want to see. But it's a bad habit. She's curious, George. I'm curious, George. But it's a bad habit. It's a bad habit. You just have to. I just I look stop. at everyone I've dated, not even just exes. Like I'll go through wow. everyone for what? Just for fun. That's not fun. That's I'm sitting. Torture. She wants to see where she is. Uh, yeah. in, in the, in That's the, what it in is. The war. We're, we're comparing ourselves. <laughs> That's what we're it is. saying. Did you get oh, uglier no, no, since no. we broke up? Did you get hotter? Is she better looking? That's what we're doing. Yeah. Sometimes I see like the ones I got engaged. I'm like, oh. Cute. Right. And I'll sock the girl. No, I don't. Oh, I have exes that I still follow that I'm like happy for. Yeah, and everything, exactly. But... I can still look at people that I've yeah. dated in the past and be like, I'm so proud of them. Like, but that's... most. No, but I'm no. the serious, serious ones. I'm like that ended poorly. Yeah, of course they're not yeah. going to be like looking at their page going like, oh, happy for them. Like <laughs> saying the ones that you didn't have a bad ending with. Whatever. I guess just just Stop. try not to. Try not to. It's hard, but try not to. Okay, this is the last one. This guy I'm interested in and hasn't messaged me is liking and responding a lot to my Instagram stories. What does that mean? Oh, he's scared. I, he's really? scared. He's scared. Mm. So 
You gotta be like confident to like. Oh, wait, but actually, you don't think that's a sneaky like slide in, just testing the waters? Sorry, can you read the beginning so of it again with the messages? I'm interested guy. in this guy, but he hasn't messaged me, and he's liking and responding to a lot of my Instagram stories. What oh yeah, he's mean? testing the waters. Yeah, yeah. I thought that they had already messaged before. Is he waiting for first. her to say something? Uh, or maybe just get if he's playing like the likes game, then he's probably just waiting for you to like something back, and then he's gonna slide. Mm. He probably is that, just is isn't very forward with it. Um, I'll test the waters here and okay, there, yeah. but I'll also just message someone. See, I feel like this is like guys are fishing, and that's the bait, and they want to see if they can hook you. I know, just like how on a first date everything's like a back and forth. I feel like social media is the same thing. You one to- one thing I would say about it though is like I think some guys are like concerned that they're gonna come off as like too aggressive or something if you just mm. like slide in some random person's like DMs or whatever. Mm-hmm. So they might want to get some kind of indication, like okay, yeah, I'm like open to you messaging me, but. Okay. It's really not that serious either way. Like a I, message is just a message. I read so mm-hmm. much on every yeah, we interaction. Think, oh my god, he's in love with us. <laughs> yeah, I'm like always, he's obsessed with us. He's yeah. watching every story. I know, like, but that's that, crazy. But then I think about how many times I've just like tapped through stories and not even thought twice about right. it. Yeah. And like, like, why do we look? What did they think that I'm in love with them? Do you look at your <laughs> viewers for stories sometimes? Yeah. For certain people, probably. Yeah. I mean, there's always people I look out for. By the way, I will tell you this: the ones that don't watch and you know that don't have like a lot of followers and they could easily watch you that are avoiding you. Yeah, it's even better. That's like, even better. You know. Then you know that yeah. you're triggering them. Yeah, you know. <laughs> God, Instagram is such a dangerous tool. <laughs> I know. Okay, that was the end of this part one episode. Woo-woo! So we're going to pause for a second and then get into questions from the guys. So we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye.